And originally, CCD devices were actually, when they built them, they were supposed to be a memory device, like a RAM chip, right? They, they were trying to make a RAM chip, and it turned out it wasn't actually the best thing to do RAM. They went with a different idea. Um, but somebody, some engineer actually realized that these would be sensitive to light, right? So we've got a question. We've got a question. What's your question? Oh, on the test. Yeah, on the test. Um, you want us to memorize, like, the, hy or the, yeah, the hydrogen? Masses? Yeah. All those masses will be given to you. Okay. I don't know. Um, so this is this is a picture of a of a CCD device. If you took your camera apart and looked in the back, you would be seeing the CCD device. And of course, really nice ones have a big sensor on them because the bigger the sensor is, by the way, the more light. For reasons that we're about to learn, the more light each pixel can have because each pixel is a little bit bigger. Um, there we have it, right? Uh, and uh, yeah. So concept zero is that uh, that CCD devices are actually analog devices. People think that they're digital, but they are actually an analog thing. They're going to store a voltage. And the way they work is that they, they store charge. They're called a charge-coupled device. That's what CCD stands for. And each little pixel acts like a charge storage device. And in, in physics, when we store charge on something, that is a particular capacitance, right? So the capacity of something is the charge on the device that you put on there, divided by the pressure it took to put them on the device. So if an object has a lot of capacitance, it doesn't take very much pressure to put electrons onto it, because it's such a big room. Think of a capacitor as like a room for the charge. Okay. Why don't we, can we pass our rulers forward? If you're done with your rulers, and I can't imagine that you're not done, pass those rulers forward. Okay. Here is, a capacitor that has somewhat more capacitance than one of those little pixels on that CCD that I showed you a picture of. Okay, this one has a capacitance of, and I think this is funny, 300,000 microfarads. Now, micro is 10 to the minus sixth. 100,000 is 10 to the fifth. That makes this 0 0.3 farads. Imagine what a farad is. I'd be using two hands to show you a farad capacitor, right? So a farad is a ridiculously large amount of capacitance, but think about what it means. With a potential of only one volt, we can store a, a freaking coulomb of charge on it, right? Wow, yeah, that would, that would, um, yeah, that would get your attention if you accidentally shorted it up. Okay, here is one that is considerably less capacitance, but it has a higher voltage rating. So these are electrolytic capacitors, and when you become an electrical engineer, you will realize that they are polar. They've got a plus side and a minus side. If you reverse the polarity, they will burst, okay, because they've got like wet stuff in them and that stuff will boil and it will go boom. Okay, not fun explosion, but just like nasty chemical stuff spraying all over, right? So these things are polar. They also have a maximum voltage. If you go above that voltage, they'll also burst because they'll break down the insulation and current will flow through it and make them very hot, okay? So this one is 40 volts and we're not going to get into this, but the energy stored is a bit like springs. The more charge you put into them, the harder it is to put charge in them, right? And so the, 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 um, the energy in them is one-half capacitance times voltage squared. And we used to learn all that, but we don't anymore in ID. I'm going to turn this on. I can crank it all the way up to 25 volts, and I'm safely within the 40 volts this can withstand. Now all I have to do is not be an idiot and reverse the polarity. I think this is plus. See, I'm double-checking this. Thanks. Because these are bad when they blow. So I just stored some power on there, yeah? Okay, and it's all stored, and we can, you know, we can tell a joke, right? Grasshopper walks into a bar, right? The bartender looks at him and laughs and goes, you know, I've got, I, I serve a drink that's named after you, right? And the guy goes, you have a drink named Jim? And see, that's funny, because there's a drink called Grasshopper. Yeah? Isn't it funny? Yeah. So now I'm going to tell the joke again. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So, there's energy stored on this, and you don't think there is, but by God, ooh, I think there is, yeah. Look at that. Ooh. Why are they sticking to it? Because it welded the metal. That's kind of funny. Okay. So, so years ago, um, I had this student in 1994. She graduated in 1994. Her name was Joy Mia Hira. Okay. Um, but anyway, she wanted to, to make a very small thermocouple. Yes? A thermocouple is you take two different metals and you weld them together, and, or just touch them together. And if you apply a certain potential, if you apply a temperature to them, then they generate a voltage. 
Yeah? You can actually generate electricity by this. You have to have like a hot side and a cold side. And it's a very simple heat engine, very efficient, right? And, and, the, and the cool thing is, so, so, so if you have like one in ice water, one in a, in a flame, electric current will flow. Yeah, isn't that cool? Now, what if you make electric current flow? Can you then have one side be hot and one side be cold? Yeah. yeah. So those little chests, freezers, that you can plug into your cigarette lighter in your car, right? You can get from sharper image and stuff like that, right? Okay. Those things work on that principle. They've got thermocouples, crazy, crazy thermocouples that they've like, you know, folded up and have many, many, many thermocouples right? put together. Those things have a hot side and a cold side. Cold side is where you put your beverages, and the hot side is outside with little heat fins on it, right? Okay. So you wanted to make one of these thermocouples to measure temperature, but you wanted it to be as big as the intersection of the two wires, which are very tiny. So we, we used capacitors to weld the wires end to end, right? This took some doing because too much voltage, and obviously you like vaporize the wire, and it wasn't there anymore. It's like, bam, oh, too much, right? And then we turn the voltage down, charge it up, and eventually it would just go and weld just like those guys welded, right? Um, and then she took it on a caliper and put it through a candle flame, and we discovered, as many people have discovered before, that the flames are actually hotter on the outside and in the middle, they're actually colder. Isn't that funny? Because in the middle, you've got a lot of uh, wax vapor, which is fairly cool, relatively speaking, right? But on the outside edge, the incandescent part of the flame is where the oxygen and the fuel are combining. That's cool. That has nothing to do with charge couple devices, all right. So this is our first example, and it's really pretty basic. Um, a CCD device has a capacitance of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. What is the voltage across if it's, if it's been charged with 6.0 times 10 to the fourth electron charges, right? So isn't the voltage going to be charge divided by capacitance? Isn't that right? This is very simple stuff, right? And this makes sense because, think about it, this is the pressure you need to put the electrons into the room. That pressure depends on how, how many electrons you're putting in the room. Yes. Divided by the size of the room. This is like the ideal gas law, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so it's very similar to that. And now, we, now we're all set. If the voltage is the charge divided by uh, the capacitance, the charge is 6.0 times 10 to the fourth electrons, right? Times 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs per electron. Right? Like how hard is it to write the word electron? Am I still writing the word electron? Oh my God. Okay. And then I'm dividing by the size of the room, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 12. And a, and a, and a, a ferret is really a uh, coulomb per volt, right? What do we end up with units? I think the coulombs go the way of the bison, right? And the electrons go the way of the bison. And we end up with 1 over 1 over volts, which is, seems like what we want, right? So 6E4 times 1.602E minus 18 divided by 1.7E minus 12. And I get it's equal to 0 0.00565 volts. How many sig figs do we have? Just two. So I guess I just have to round that up to say 5.7 millivolts. Yeah? Yeah. That's not bad. So do time better. multiply our answer by to the fourth. Well, milli is 10 to the minus third, so. But the third. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You don't have to put it in millivolts, but typically these are very small voltages because they're tiny little things, right? The voltages running around on little integrated circuits are millivolts. Volt would just arc out. That's way, way too much volt. Can we try some of these? Yeah. Number one, this is number two. Number one, a dog eating with my. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> over and over again. <laughs> 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 well, we can.